Want to learn how to make money in beekeeping? Then watch this video. Hello and welcome to the Gwynny Glyph YouTube channel. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countries I live in and we do tool reviews as well. So if you're interested in any of those topics then make sure you click subscribe. So the main thing you've got if you want to make money out of bees and beekeeping is your main crop's going to be honey. So every hive is going to be producing between 20 and 40 pounds of honey per year on an average year. On the best year, 2018 is brings to my memory, it was a fantastic year. Some hives would produce 100 plus pound of honey. Now, when I say pound, I don't mean sterling, I mean uh, weight. Pound as in the weight. Um, but other years, you know, they might produce zero. So 2017 was a bad year for us. A lot of our hives made zero pounds. Um, they make any money out of those hives this year. So it balances out. As long as you're averaging between 20 and 40 pounds per year, you're doing all right. And you can sell that wholesale, sell it to big distributors, big packages that are interested in buying honey in bulk, or you can sell it what's called from the farm gate, direct from your house, from the door. Or if like me, you want to sell into shops and retailers, um, that's where the best margin is going to be. Uh, there's a bit more work involved but you, you get more per pound for your honey. But if you're gonna go down that road, there's a few things that you've gotta take into consideration. So you've gotta have a clean place to extract and package your honey. So I've got a purpose-built honey house. Um, it's a five-star rated food hygiene room. So you will need to do the same. Now you don't have to build a honey house like me if you're on a much smaller scale, but you do need to get environmental health out to sign off your kitchen, or wherever you're going to be producing honey because at the end of the day honey is a food people are going to eat it you don't want nothing to contaminate the honey to make someone ill and then you're open to get sued then so you've got to make sure that you're extracting and jarring honey in a clean environment and that's got to be environmentally um, signed off and um, in Wales you've got like a, a five star um, rated food system five being the highest zero being uh, the lowest, so we're, we're on a five star, which is the highest. Then another thing you need, you've got to make sure that your labels and the way you fill your jars is compliant with trading standard. So if we do a quick look on Google, honey labels regulations, it'll show you everything you need because you've got to have a batch number, you've got to have a date, you've got to have um, what exactly it is. So is it Welsh honey, British honey, You've got to have the word honey um, on it. You've got to have the weight in ounce and in grams. So there's a couple of things like that. That's, that changes all the time, so I won't go into it in detail. But you do a quick Google search of it, and you can pull up all the information of what you need on your honey labels. And again, selling honey, uh, training standards, you want to get yourself a decent set of industrial scales so you can weigh your jars of honey. So if you're selling a 12 ounce jar, you know where the line is within that jar 12 ounce. Trading standard does look for that to make sure you're not selling honey under weight, what it should be. They don't really care if you're overweight a little bit. So, you know, if you haven't got scales and you don't want to get, uh, get trading standards on your case, just overfill the jar a little bit and you'll be safe. Beeswax. So this is your secondary crop within the beekeeping world that you can sell. Beeswax worth a lot of money these days. People are using it for all kinds of things and there is a demand for beeswax. Now you can same as honey, you can be selling that wholesale or you can be selling that yourself. Now we sell ours ourselves in the kilo block. Um, we find that there's a good return on that. But if you are a bit of an entrepreneur and you want to add value to your beeswax then you can start making food wraps, candles, uh, cosmetics, 
uh, polish is, there's a lot of stuff you can use beeswax for. Now, if you're going on the polish route or, you know, leather, fab, um, conditioner, that type of thing, there's not really any laws on doing that. But if you're going to go down into the cosmetics route, there is a lot of legislation covering what you can and can't do. Um, I don't sell anything down the cosmetic road. I know some people that do. Um, but just check the legalities of what you need in place before you start making cosmetics. You just can't cook that up in the kitchen and then sell it without making sure all the ingredients, once mixed together, is safe to put on someone's body. You can sell bees. Now this is a great um, money maker if you've got plenty of hives and you've got, oh, you've got too many hives, you're producing splits every year and you just end up with too many bees or you want to start creating your own nukes and sell them. You know, at the minute within 2019, a nuke of bees is going to be anything from 160 to 240 pounds per nuke. So that could be very lucrative and um, quite low cost as well. The only downside of selling nukes instead of honey is if you're selling nukes, your hives are going to be weaker because you're taking bees out of your hive. So your honey crops going to be much, much, much lower, but you are going to be able to sell nukes of bees on to other beekeepers. Now, if you wanted to make a little bit more money, you can sell a full hive. So not just sell a six frame nuke, but sell a 12 frame uh, hive of bees inside the hive. You know, that's going to be 240 plus um, money. The, I think the most expensive I've seen a hive of bees go was in that auction, and that was about 350 pound, but uh, very doubtful you'll get that much. But um, I've seen them make that kind of money. It all depends what kind of hive. If you put them in a nice hive, new hive, then you can demand a bit more money for it. And down the selling routes of uh, nukes and bees, you can start selling queens. So this is a bit harder to do than making nukes, because within the nuke you can just make a split and you've got a nuke. When you're making queens, um, if you use YouTube bit, queen rearing, there's some fantastic videos out there. We don't really um, queen rear you, we don't make big batches, but a friend of mine does it quite successfully. And you can sell queens from anything from 20 to 40 pounds per queen, and you can send that queen off in the post. Um, that can be very lucrative, but it's very weather dependent doing that. The queen's only got a certain time frame to mate, and if it rains within that time frame, then your queens are going to be duds. So it can be profitable, but it can be uh, time consuming and uh, sometimes you make a loss of it so like with any livestock there's element of luck um, within it as well you can manufacture beekeeping equipment so if you're quite good with your hands making a beehive roofs hive components hive stands all of the timber they're quite easy to do as long as you know what you're doing so there's definitely an aspect of making money within the beekeeping world is making and manufacturing beehive and hive components. As long as you're a bit of a carpenter, you've got good hands, you can work the bee space out correctly, there's some good money to be made there. And to get the plans, that's all you've got to do. You just buy a full size hive. Say you wanted to start building nationals, you just buy a national hive, you take the measurements off that. Or if you just Google hive uh, measurements, beehive measurements, that type of search, they'll come up with plans and uh, you can just copy them and go down your local builders merchant, buy some wood and start making beehives. Another aspect of making um, beehives, you can actually import beehive components from say China or other countries via Alibaba and you can buy a container in or you know buy a pallet in then resell in the UK. A lot of people are doing that and I think they're being quite successful at doing it. Now you can sell bee feed and medicines. Now this is an aspect of my business model. I sell a lot of bee feed, uh, syrup and fondant. That helps my bee business uh, within the winter months to produce uh, cash flow and an income. Now we don't really sell medicine, but like again, you could make a deal with um, a pharmaceutical company that makes hive uh, bee medicines, and you can buy that in bulk, then resell that on similar with the bee feed. There's lots of companies out there that make bee feed. That's a good option if you want to supplement your beekeeping wage, especially in the winter months, is to go down that route. Pollination. Now, a lot of bee farmers out there, they're making an income going around pollinating crops. So I know companies like Bulmas, they grow apples because they've got to make cider. 
and they need bees to pollinate the crops to get more apples so they can make more cider. Now they're willing to pay bee farmers to take their bees onto the crop and they pay uh, a fixed sum per hive over the amount of time that they want the bees there. So if you're making honey beeswax, pollination fee can be an added income to your operation as well. A lot of beekeepers out there have got a program in place where you sponsor a hive or you adopt a hive. Now the business model behind that is uh, it's more uh, geared towards charities or corporate um, businesses where if they've got some money that they want to spend on good causes, helping the environment etc they can adopt a hive or sponsor a hive from you so you paint the hive in their corporate colours for example I'll just pick McDonald's uh, as an example um, I don't think they, they do it but for example say McDonald's wanted to sponsor a hive with you you buy a hive, paint it up all McDonald's colouring and logos on it and a little badge saying McDonald's is supporting the bees in this hive they will pay a fixed sum every year um, as part of that deal they'll probably get some honey back and they get the media and the publicity um, and the social media posts that come along with adopting the hive and it's just good PR it looks good on a corporate firm or small company that adopts the hive sponsors the hive and it's good for the beekeeper that look, looks after the hive, looks after the bees, that they've got an income coming off there. So something that could be mutual, beneficial, as long as you geared up uh, correctly for it. You know, no one's going to sponsor your hive if your hive is looking rubbish, that you're not willing to paint the hive, you're not willing to put the social media content out there to back up and to advertise what you're doing. You know, if someone's going to sponsor your hive, they're going to want something back for it. And more often than not, it's media attention, it's social media attention, etc. So just make sure you gear up for that. You can run bee courses and training events. Now this is a great way to supplement your income, especially if you're full time on the bees, you're not working in the week, you can run beekeeping courses. You can get groups of between five and ten to come down your apiary. You teach them the basics about beekeeping, going through hives, and you can split that up into half day tasted events or full day training events or you can even take it a, a step further and do a day every week for six weeks etc or do a crash course over a weekend where you teach beekeeping somewhere maybe on a one-to-one -one basis and uh, there's some good money to be had in there because even though there's a lot of beekeepers out there um, most of them now are elderly I think the average bee farmer's age is about 60 uh, last time I checked so there is going to be a gap in the market there for someone who is willing to train new beekeepers coming through because there is a demand out there, people want to start keeping bees and it's the type of thing, it's very hard just to jump into yourself, it's a lot easier with training so if you're, if you're able to offer um, that training to people, people are willing to pay money for it. YouTube and Patreon, no, there's an income to be had there. Uh, YouTube, if you're over the hundreds of thousands of subscribers, there's some money to be made there with advertisement. But the downside of that, you've, your channel needs to be massive. It needs to be a hundred plus thousand subscribers for you to get any kind of decent money from it. But on the other website, Patreon, that's a pay to watch channel. So you can, if you're quite a skilled beekeeper or you've got a specific niche, say, for example queen rearing and you don't want to put that content on youtube for free you can put that on patreon um, i think that's um, a monthly subscription that you can put the monthly subscription charge out for people can learn from you then and pay you money to learn but i'd say you've got to be pretty much niche you've got to have something extra to offer someone um, if you're going to be putting stuff on patreon because pretty much all the stuff is free on youtube anyway so as long as you've got a niche that's not on YouTube, people will be willing to pay money to watch that content. Sponsors. Now there's another place to make money. If you're very good on the internet, you're very good at marketing, um, you've got a bit of a following, then companies might be interested in sponsoring you. Um, for example, if you've got a quite a big YouTube channel or you're doing lots with schools and groups and you've got maybe a training event where people come to your apiary to learn about beekeeping 
and you've got companies then advertising at your premises, advertising on your channels, etc. They're willing to pay money for that, especially if they're in the beekeeping world. If you're a big trainer, you've got maybe 100 plus people come into your apron to train about bees, then some bee manufacturers might want their stickers, banners, etc. within your training premises. There is a little bit of money to be made there. Now, the last point um, where you can make money, you can be a beekeeping contractor. Now, for example, there's a lot of beekeepers out there, they just started out and they're not quite sure maybe of what's the best way to run a hive and they've done a couple of mistakes and maybe they've killed the queen. Now, if some beekeeper contractors, um, you know, they're almost like vets but they're not nowhere near as trained, they're just uh, what I call beekeeper contractors, you can call them up, ask them to come to your apiary, they'll go through your hive, they'll see what the problem is, um, especially if they're quite an experienced beekeeper or bee farmer, they'll know straight away the queen's dying or there's no queen in here, what we need to do is this, 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 maybe take frames from another hive, put the, those frames in so the bees can hatch the eggs out to make another queen, etc. Um, you know, the, <clears throat> there's some money to be made there and more often than not, it's like a fixed fee to come out to see you and then it's per hour after that. Or to take that a step further, you could be employed or be a subcontractor to a bigger bee farmer. So if there's a big bee farmer in, in your area, certain times of the year, he needs help, he needs employees to help his operation. He can't just go out anywhere to find staff. If you're a trained beekeeper and you've got experience, then you can subcontract your services in, uh, onto him and then he'll pay you a day rate, weekly wage, monthly wage, etc. Um, so there's definitely, I'm not saying there's fantastic money in that, but there's definitely an income to be made there. Well, that's it. That's all my ideas of how to make money keeping bees and beekeeping and if you've got a money making idea within the beekeeping world put it in the comments I'd love to hear about it um, I get back to everybody that comments on my social media we're on Twitter Instagram Facebook we're pretty much on every social media platform out there I'd love to hear from you and thanks for watching